Hey everybody, looks like we are ready to go ahead and start this new live stream, which is pretty cool. So I'm pretty excited. So let me make sure that everything is going correct. I think everything is fine for part two. So with this being said, let me go ahead and start the chat so I can see you guys who's here and I can talk to you. Let's see. I just have to very quickly go ahead, of course, and authorize the chat. Just be one second. So it is late October. Can't believe October is almost done. That's pretty crazy if you ask me the way time is flying. I am almost there. We are going, let's see if we have crickets or there's someone here. Hey, Mike, how's it going? How's everything? Good to see you. So we have Mike S in the house. So that's great. Uh, so right now we have good sound. Thanks, Mike, and everything. That's fantastic. So Badger is sending a replacement on the 2020. So that's really good news. I am very glad to hear that. So right now we are on part two of this. And what I'm going to do is turn on my fan. Believe it or not, it's still a little muggy here in New Jersey sometimes. Hey, Tone, good to see you. Thank you so much for coming by, man. So we got Tone and my guests so far. So I'm pretty excited, very excited about that. And I'm just going to go ahead and change it so I can see it on the big screen here. It didn't show up part two yet, but I have the different cameras. So let's see, we have three, and then we have scene one, of course, which is the camera right here. Let's see if I can move that. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's pretty good there. So we have camera one, and then we have this scene, number two, and that's the one we're going to be using most. Hey, Rick, how's it going? Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming, Rick. I'm just trying to get to the, the big screen here so I could see what you guys are seeing. It's just going to take, you know what I have to do? I have to leave it and then come back. Let's see. Seems like it's a little temperamental. And go to my videos. It should be there right now. There it is. Perfect. So it shows that we have three people watching. Let me kill the sound. So right now I can see that the sound quality is pretty good. Uh, so let's say if like I'll go to scene one, and I can turn this around and just show you the television. And so that's, I look at it on the big screen there. So this way uh, I can see how the picture quality is and everything. So that's that. Let me put this back here. So I hope you guys are having a really good week. Uh, can't believe it's Wednesday already. Uh, whoa, just got to get this. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay. So, all right. So, so <laughs> a little bit of a technical challenge here. Okay. So, let's go ahead and, and start with the first scene and begin with the painting. So, so we are uh, a little muggy, yeah, it's 51, it's around the 50s and 60s, but for some reason, it just doesn't seem like it's autumn yet for me, Mike, you know? Uh, so let's see. Okay, so we're in part two, we're gonna continue with the light mixture, and we're just gonna start to slowly deepen some of these values, and I think that's the best way to go. So you remember, I always like to work the ensemble, right? The whole, the whole of the painting. So let's go ahead and see if we can work on uh, some of her cheekbones there. Just very lightly, very soft. I want this to be a very soft, subtle, uh, beautiful portrait.
Now I'm a good distance away, so that makes a big difference. So you see, um, probably maybe about three inches from the surface. And I keep the air down and I pump the trigger, which is very important. So I learned how to do these smooth transitions from one scene to the next. So as you see, I don't have to stop. I can just go from here and then work over here. Uh, even if I want to uh, check out like a website or, or something like that, I could really, really make these really smooth, uh, smooth scene changes. So if you go on to the website paintingclips.com, you can actually download this photo if you want to work along. You definitely have that ability. You just right click on the photo and you can download it. And just, you know, making sure at this point you take your time, you know. Now we do have some really nice rich darts over here and we can go ahead and start to work them in too. Now of course freehand shield is always important to use, especially if you want to, you know, get a little bit of a hard edge right here. And you, you definitely the same rule applies uh, perpendicular in that parallel. There is a bit of a hard edge between her, her jawline and her neck area. When things are subtle like this, guys, you definitely want to make sure that you are going slow, that you slow it down. And slow it down also meaning, you know, the application, but slowing down how dark you get and how soon you want to get darker very slowly. So remember in part one we basically worked on the white and uh, uh, so Mike says, does it cost anything to join the site? Uh, oh, paintingglyphs.com? Not at all. You just It's just my website, Mike, and you can just go ahead and download. I have the picture where you can just go ahead and download it, my friend. And so we'll go over here. So what we're doing is we're just starting to really work on the anatomy of her neck and her jawline and we're not really worried about getting too dark but we're really worried about getting those shapes together we're going to actually do frisket film for one of the few times um, on paper so we're going to use uh, the clear contact paper which is going to be very interesting because we want that really hard edge of the background coming from her hair and that's going to be achievable with the frisket film. So, and then we're going to work on the background and get some really nice gradations and really separate her from the background but still give a feeling of air. And that's what you want. You want to have a feeling of atmosphere. So if you notice I'm moving around and but going slow meaning going slow is how dark I'm going. Uh, very gradual from light to dark here. It's key if I went too dark too soon it would be too harsh and would pretty much ruin the whole mood of this vintage portrait. 
Now right here, I do see we have a line of her neck, sort of the crease of her neck. I'm gonna very, very lightly with the pencil just reiterate this here because then I'm going to achieve that with with the airbrush. But I wanna draw it out first. Yeah, and you'll find information on a lot of different things uh, on the website, uh, such as the online classes, uh, information on on portraits and the inks and you know all that other stuff you find on there so you see I'm just establishing that crease very very lightly because the crease if I was to go too dark with this crease it would look like a line on her neck and that's something we definitely don't want so you see just very lightly I went ahead and uh, did that now here, as you know, you see her clavicle right here. So we're definitely going to need a freehand shield to uh, make that come forward and the rest of her neck area go back in space. There we go. Here, we'll just go ahead and soften it. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we are turning the forms, that she is uh, three-dimensional, you know, in space, you know. She's, light is affecting her as, you know, when an egg would affect an egg in space, that sort of thing. So you want to have those rules of, of light and dark. And those fundamentals are what's going to really make her actually start to turn. Like you feel her in space. And let's see. We have a little bit of a crease right here. So I'm just going to very, very super lightly uh, address that crease ever so lightly but you know doing it with the freehand shield it'll have that nice hard edge which really won't uh, that it'll have that really nice hard edge that will remain there when I go a little darker oh yes Mike I did see that today yes the uh, the value uh, finder which is very good you know it's it's very important when you know eventually you'll get uh, you know eventually uh, seeing values become second nature but in the early going definitely anything that could help you to see the values is very important so using the freehand shield I'm basically just establishing that clavicle area right there and also right here as well so you'll see that you want to go perpendicular and not parallel and then you could lightly now of course this is going to be much darker but what we're doing here now is we're establishing shape and then we're doing relative relative degrees of value Hey, Gloria, good to see you. How are you? So cool. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that, Mike. Mike says that the eyes are really popping out. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah, right now, you know, everything has to catch up to her eyes. But as you can see, we are just taking our time where there's no rushing it's just uh you know slow and steady but you know remember we're using the light mixture and the light mixture basically slows everything down when you go into the medium it's much faster means things get darker much faster uh same thing with the dark things get dark really fast 
So right now is definitely the slow stage of the painting. So maintaining my distance here. And right here on the bottom part of her chin, it's a little darker in value. Of course, we're going to go darker. It's not the actual value, but we're building those darks. I'm keeping the air down, and while keeping the air down, I'm pumping the trigger while moving. This keeps you from having uh, areas that are too dark, uh, barbells, that sort of thing. So you're really controlling how much paint you're applying onto the surface. And then, so you see I'm always moving around, which is very important, but also with the fact of moving around, also we are erasing areas. I like using this knock uh, by Mono 3.8. It's nice and soft, yet yeah, still, still erases very well without tearing into the surface. I did see some areas that I could go ahead and start to erase, such as right here. Some of the pencil lines that are guides, you don't need them anymore. So it's always good to erase them as you go. And let's say if you have to erase a little bit and you, uh, you know, lighten the value, it's a lot easier to make corrections as you go as trying to erase everything at one stage, you know what I mean? So we're going to take our freehand shield again, and we're going to go ahead and reiterate her chin here. See that? Perpendicular and not parallel. And Right here we have a little bit of a dark line, just, but very soft. <coughs> when it's that soft, you really don't need the freehand shield. It's really more for your hard edges. Remember, there's a difference between hard and soft edge, you know. Uh, yes, Mike, if you are having a problem with your, uh, you know, it's locking up, it definitely could be your connection, definitely. Uh, I'm hardwired, so it usually isn't from here. So as you can see, I'm moving around, keeping things going. working on the big shapes of her hair. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut some, cut some frisket film. But right now I'm just working on those large shapes of her hair. Everything is pretty soft edge with her hair, so I'm not doing too much frisket, uh, too much freehand shields in her hair. It's all very soft. So there's some really nice, rich, dark areas, which I definitely probably should wait for the uh, frisket because I want that hard edge, but we'll see. You know, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna handle it just yet. But as far as the inner areas, I definitely want to go ahead and establish some of these darker values. Because if I don't darken this, then everything's going to look, uh, when I darken this, the values will pretty much look closer if there is that dynamic range. Even though everything's lighter, we still want to have the values begin, you know, relationship-wise. 
Now right here it's much darker. Now this edge, of course, I'm going to wait until I cover the background, then I can go ahead and get really rich and dark over here, especially the hair. The hair, her hair is very dark. Now I do have that program called Pure Ref, which is very good and it enables me to always have my reference uh, front and center on top and I can also make it bigger or smaller. So that has been a real uh, advantage uh, lately in the work I've been doing. So pureref.com, it's really fantastic. Uh, when you download it, it gives you the option of how much you want to donate. You can Put five dollars, three dollars, whatever you want, or zero, and they'll still let you donate it, which is really fantastic. So moving around, then over here we have more things going on with her hair. And remember that whole you know, one second rule, relatively speaking. If you're gonna look at it for one second, you're gonna paint for one second, look at the reference for a second. Very crucial. Ah, oh, great, good to have you back there, Mike. So it was your internet connection or just the browser froze up? Probably the browser, right? Okay, so as you see, we're working this over here. And let's see if we could work on some areas of her forehead. We wanna make sure her forehead doesn't look like just some flat area. So we're gonna do some subtle modeling of the forms here. See how important that is. And as we're going, we definitely wanna make sure that we are getting rid of pencil lines that we no longer need. And of course, this is the Knock 3.8 by Mono. Tombow and mono is the eraser, 3.8 knock is the size. Remember all the supplies that you see here are in the description field, those are affiliate links. They don't cost you anything more to use them, but if you do purchase from those affiliate links, the channel does get a small commission. And I do mean small, I mean minuscule, but still something, it all adds up, right? Oh, 12 tabs open, Mike. So, Mike, you had 12 tabs open. That'll definitely do it. Okay. And once again, I'm using the light mixture here. I always use my ink mixtures, and this is the light mixture. So, that is... Uh, you know, really important to state that, you know, using the light mixtures, you're able to go ahead and uh, work your painting in a more systematic approach. You don't have to worry about things such as, uh, you know, do I have the correct mixture, the correct dilution? It's all mixed for you, calibrated by myself, and you can purchase them at paintedglyphs.com. Only $16.95 plus shipping and handling. If you order it, I get that to you within a few days. And you can always look at my videos on my YouTube channel, this channel right here, and you can see the ink mixtures in using the paper in action, which is fantastic. So very slowly with that light mixture, setting up for that dark mixture down the line. 
Okay, so we have our beautiful nose here, and what we're going to do is we're going to start modeling her nose. It's a little flat right now, so our job is to make sure we model her nose. Model means make sure we 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 paint the three-dimensional qualities of it, the lights, the darks, the transition tones, the lights, the highlights, that sort of thing. We're not going to do everything right now, but we're going to start the modeling process of that nose being a three-dimensional form in space. As we are modeling it, you'll see that it becomes more realistic and really starts to look like her nose. That's because we're paying attention to how the light falls upon her. That one second rule, so if you look for a second, you paint for a second, that's so important. So we'll just go ahead and blow up by her nose so you can see exactly what I mean. There we go. So right now we are just modeling the form. And making sure that we get the edges, you know, where there are hard edges, where there are soft edges. Those are going to be the areas that will really help you to create realism that you're looking for. Of course, I'm after realism and I'm also after emotion. So that's two things I'm really interested in. As you can see, we have to make sure we don't get too harsh over here and so we definitely have to soften this area up here remember you don't erase until it's dry and having it dry is so important because if it's wet you're going to actually destroy the surface of your paper and that's going to something you would have to wrestle with for the rest of the painting and that's no fun because we're going to be working on this painting for quite some time Just very slowly building that up and see if I can darken this just a little bit. And trust your eyes because there might be certain areas where, you know, maybe you might feel the nostrils should be more in line. But trust your eyes and don't always follow the dogma of anatomical patterns. You know, such as, you know, the body is seven and a half heads long, that sort of thing. Not everything is so cookie cutter. You want to really pay attention to what you're seeing. So I'm really happy with the way things are starting to develop. You see, just very slowly. You know, I know I'm going to come in darker, but I just want to start to establish some of those darker areas. Just begin to model the form. See that? Just begin to model the form. And 
do not even worry one second whether it looks like the model because right now you're concerned with different things. It's not going to look like her until everything is established and the details start revealing themselves. But at this point, you're not going to be concerned with, with making a likeness. Likeness will happen naturally when you're doing all this stuff right in the early going. Increasing my distance to get a lighter value. And right here with her cheeks, we have a little bit of a crease. We pull that down. Same thing over here. We have a little bit of a pull down with her muscles a little bit. So we want to go ahead and establish that look. Yeah, so now I'm pumping that trigger and, you know, back, you know, just pumping it back while I'm moving with the air still down. And that's very important. Mike says, Tim, what if anything do you put on your finished portrait when finished to protect them? Uh, I just frame them under glass and uh, that's all you need to do, even with the pastel. If you frame them under glass, Mike, they're going to be fine forever. I very rarely do I ever use fixative uh, with the airbrush portraits I don't uh, you know because what fixative does it darkens the image and also changes the texture so those are two things you don't want to do so you'll spray fixative then you got to go over it again because the look is not what you were looking for so anyway fixative is so toxic for your lungs and everything uh, so I really don't like fixative I use it for pastel once in a very blue moon. I have it in the studio. That's when you overload the surface. That's the only time I'll ever use fixative. But never to preserve a work. I just think that's some sort of marketing ploy. If you take a drawing and you just uh, have it on the glass, it's going to be perfect for generations and generations. It'll look like the day you actually started it. Oh wow, so Mike's still having trouble. Oh boy. Definitely could be the internet. So we have a very quiet live stream today. That's cool. You know, every live stream is different. Last live stream actually was hugely popular during the week. Almost 200 views which is probably like almost 50%, 60% more than usual. So people will seem to be catching these after the fact. I know there seems to be an increase in international traffic on my YouTube channel, which is very cool. And I love hanging out with the international artists. Oh, the answer on the fixative is I very rarely use it, Mike because it actually changes the texture and darkens everything. So I end up having to work on it again to get the look I want. If I frame it just with a regular piece of glass over it, that's gonna stay preserved forever. And that is definitely the, the route to go. So I don't even use a mat a lot of the times. I'll just have the glass right on top of it or the mat with glasses works as well. Either way, it just protects it forever. Uh, everything I use is archival, the paper, the ink, and so there's no problems. It's light fast. It's not going to fade or anything like that. So let's go ahead and establish her eyebrow here. It's a little bit darker than the rest of the area. Let me lower that air pressure. Lowering that air pressure, I'm able to get closer without any spidering. So what I recommend when you do uh, you do uh, airbrush during the week, make sure you spend some time just going over, uh, you know, dagger strokes and dots and playing with air pressure and viscosity and really know your airbrush and the ink that you use or the paint. And this way, 
by practicing, it's not going to be a total surprise when you're painting on your painting. You want to rehearse, and how we rehearse is just practice. That's our rehearsal. So what we're looking for are those little details that are in the shadows. Even though we're painting in the shadows, we're still looking for the details in the shadows. Not just uh, worrying about value. That would be easy, but learning about value, edges, and also uh, not only the value in the edges, but also the details that are in those shapes. Meaning it's not just finding a value and putting that whole shape in there. There's a lot more going on. A lot more quiet detail. Mike S. says he remembers when he was uh, in school and the art teacher had to spray that flat finish and she put that stuff to keep from smearing. And oh yeah, well, a lot of people do use it. A lot of artists do use it, Mike. But uh, yeah, my teacher Harvey, he didn't use it. That's who I studied with at the National Academy. Uh, he did not recommend fixative at all. And I learned pastel painting from him. As you can see, we're keeping things light, but we're developing everything, developing the forms together. So. I might think that I went a little bit overzealous here and I'm just going to tap on her uh, fulcrum there but looking at her fulcrum in the reference I do see that there's a little bit of a uh, reflected light inside here so I'm just going to erase a little bit in there and then where it's a little bit harsh I'm just going to calm that down and this is also very soft so with that being said I'm just going to go ahead and increase my distance while increasing my distance you'll see I get a much softer application of, of paint just like that So now we're working on that, we realize that we can go ahead and catch up on other areas and some of those other areas would be her other upper lip, which uh, basically is much darker in value. Maintain the details that are going on in her upper lip. As you can see, that's my studio there.
go. Now we want to maintain that hard edge, which is very important at this stage and every stage, is maintaining the hard and soft edges and the degree, what is hard, what is soft. That's going to be very important. So you don't want to lose that. Then over here, we can use our, our pencil here and make sure uh, that we get the line correctly. It comes in here, and then this upper lip here on this side sort of raises up a little bit at this angle. Hey, Willie, good to see you. How are you, my friend? So you see we maintain that relationship sort of so one is higher than the other which is very crucial and you see we have that with her eyes the nose so those things line up so we're always always paying attention to what's happening so now we we do have uh, the drawing again we're always correcting the drawing We want to control, we want to have a nice hard edge there. And I think the best way to do it is with the freehand shield, as you can see. And still with that whole perpendicular as opposed, as opposed to parallel, definitely applies here. Now what's interesting is that her lips do curl uh, into the corner right over here. You see that they sort of turn and then the corner of her mouth sort of comes out this way. See that? And that's very important for her expression I feel. And we're always checking the angles and everything that's always very important and then we can come in and we can establish that dark and then we'll erase the pencil lines over here she does have that sort of corner of her mouth, but it's a lot fuzzier. Mike says, it looks like I've invested in cameras uh, than I have in all my airbrush equipment. Yes, I did, uh, definitely. Uh, a lot of research, a lot of reading. Uh, the video uh, broadcasting software is very important all those things are really and yes her eyes are definitely you know much more uh, intense right now right right guys And her, her teeth are visible, but they're in shadow. So we want to make sure we keep them in shadow. And as you can see, we're moving around a lot. And so what we're also going to do is really work on you know the contrast whether there is a contrast or no contrast and definitely look into that
And when you're moving around, you really are going to notice that there's a lot of variation in value and everything like that. Uh, also, things soften up. And pumping that trigger because as I'm pumping that trigger, I'm also uh, getting, getting skin texture. And that's what you want to do. Okay, so here's an interesting area, right on her nostril there, or the wings of her nostril. Let's blow that up. Yeah, the corners are very difficult. Uh, you know, that that is, I agree, that's a very difficult area always. So, let's go ahead and uh, really look at her really look closely at the wings of her nostrils here and let's see if we can get that drawing down really well. So what's happening is, and I think I expressed this in earlier paintings, is that the form is not always described by the form itself. Many times the form is described by what's around the form, sort of the contrast of what it's against and that's what's happening here. So you see that nostril, what we're going to do, or the wing of that nostril, is we're going to go ahead and paint the uh, sort of the cast shadow where the nostril actually meets the cheek. There we go. And you see how that really makes a big difference here. When you start hearing that weird noise, that means that air is getting underneath the freehand shield. And you want to, uh, hey, what's up, Jake? Good to see you, man. And so right now, we're just describing sort of that cast shadow as the wing of the nostril hits that cheek there. And you see how close that is to the reference. The one second rule is gonna keep you from going your own direction. You don't want to do that. We're not photorealists, but we're also not abstract expression either, so we definitely have to pay attention to what we're painting. Still with that light mixture, things are looking darker, but they're really extremely light, as in all the paintings. As we are doing this, things have to be very, very subtle. Uh, and also, we do have her fulcrum, and in her fulcrum, it goes up in an angle. And so let's go ahead and see if we could uh, sort of pull that out with the eraser. And you see we're able to do that. This right here is a little softer, so we're just going to calm that down a little bit. And then this comes out like that. Remember that whole one second rule really helps in paying attention. So when we go back out, we see now we have that nostril really uh, coming forward, the wing of that nostril. So. And we didn't do anything to the nostril. It was what we did, the cast shadow before. Uh, oh cool, some, some hoodies, very cool. So those were commissions. So as you see, we're moving around, we're keeping things going, and as we're moving around, we're just assessing, looking at uh, edges, you know, some edges are harder than soft, 
and we're looking at variations in value where it's darker, darkest, that sort of thing. We have this beautiful hard edge of the shoulder right here. Let's go ahead and establish that using the three hand shield. See that? It's really pick up that hard edge right there. So pretty soon we're actually going to go ahead and start moving towards uh, using the frisket film because I want to establish the hair and the background. So those are the two things. But before I do that, let's go ahead and start to erase some of the white in the ear, in her ear. And that will pull up some of the dark value and then we can come back in with the uh, white light mixture. But we can definitely see how you know how much we have to actually come in with the light mixture. Oh, ninth and ten one are the same thing. Yes, money is important, right? You know, that's a crucial aspect. I am going to take a very short, uh, very very short break, guys. I will be right back. Talks amongst yourselves. Okay, I am back, which is pretty cool. So basically, um, what is what is happening is that the this whole system of painting is getting more and more refined, which is fantastic. Uh, so that is really important. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, just had to take a go to the little boys' room, guys. Just had to take care of that. And uh, so we are back in business. So let's see. I wish I had chili for dinner. I haven't been able to eat anything like that in a long time. Sort of on this whole diet thing, guys. <laughs> right Gloria we I miss that I miss having chili and stuff like that you too right Gloria uh, but we just got to get more creative with food that's all we have to do we just got to work harder and and make things taste better uh, we make them taste better but it's just a little bit more work want to make her neck start to turn right and so that's what we want to do yeah I you know I have become a little better cook when I realize that my ingredients are a lot less so we have to get more creative you know and Gloria is an amazing cook my god she's a chef She's a magician in the kitchen.
And what I really like is the way that everything is sort of slowly turning. Uh, we're still in the light mixture, but when we come in with the medium mixture, things are really going to start picking up. It's just, it's just nice when it just comes slowly. Uh, that's right, we're the healthy food partners, right, Gloria? <laughs> so funny. Hey, Ray, good to see you. How you been? How you feeling, my friend? Good to have you back, Ray. Ray, your work is doing fantastic. Your, your uh, Teddy Roosevelt was just out of this world. Really amazing. Mike S. says, has anyone tried to uh, paint airbrush paint with a brush for details? I did it yesterday and it worked great. No, oh, yeah, I use uh, always. Uh, actually, my first teacher was in airbrush was David Morton. He had the 70-30 rule, and his rule was 70% airbrush, 30% paintbrush, which was really cool, especially in the beginning of airbrushing. Oh, Mike, uh, Willie says he's one of the best microwave cooks in the world. Hey, that's a, that's a, uh, that's not easy sometimes with those microwaves. You gotta, you gotta remember halfway to go in and start mixing it around. Otherwise, you're gonna get that half, half on fire, half frozen thing going on. So, that's not the easiest things in the world sometimes, right, Willie? And what we're going to do is we're just going to just work on that nice hard edge here. And like I said, always you just want to be clean with your pencil lines as you no longer need them as guides. You know, in the beginning, your pencil lines are your guides. But as you go and you start modeling the forms in that area with the airbrush, you can basically get rid of them. So right here I have a line basically where this dark shape is right here. And remember we're still in the light mixtures but what we're doing right now is we're just sort of recording those shapes and also the direction of the shadows and everything like that. You can see this direction. I want to go to the direction of the shadows. So, <laughs> yes, it's true. So what we're going to do is take this uh, kneaded eraser and we're just going to erase those pencil lines that we no longer need because we went ahead and established that dark shape. Same thing here. Willie says when it's done, it almost looks like food. <laughs> That's true. It, is, it matters more what it tastes like. We can establish some of these lights here. Now, establish. We're establishing the shapes. And when we come in with the medium mixture and the dark mixture, things are really going to take shape. But at least we have those large forms that we can build upon. So we're sort of like making the whole painting and bringing it all together as one as opposed to the eyes and the nose and the lips. Nothing irks me more when I see that kind of painting. I really like to see things come together. Paint the ensemble. Make it look like it was done all in one sitting, in one breath. And that's what I'm going to say. You know, Believe me, if I'm going to set it, I believe it. I used to, I love books that are not available anymore. Let me see if I can show you this one over here. It is under my bed. Now this book is no longer in print. I found it on eBay 
and this is the biography of Angra and it's by Walter Park and I believe this was in the 70s and what's really amazing about this is that you know it actually has some of his diaries of Angra like when he won the Prix de Rome in the 1700s early 1800s and he talks about his trip to Italy the early years his studio uh, when he came back to France and just a lot of his his thoughts on painting and art are really fantastic now what I love about Jean Augusta Dominique Angra is that his work is basically geared towards strong drawing, solid uh, modeling of the forms, and then color at the last. And that's why we're working in black and white for so long. I'm gearing to people who are beginning to get a handle on airbrush. But you know what? If someone's beginning to get a handle on airbrush and and they're going into color, well, you know what? I don't think you're gonna grow as fast as if you just started with this method of working in India ink, uh, you know, strong drawing and, you know, worrying about edges and not worrying about color. Color will come down the line, but this is where you're gonna get most of your information. So learn how to do it in this stage. It's just gonna help you down the line to create paintings that are fantastic. To teach you about color is going to be a lot easier than teaching you about all the other things such as, you know, contour and proportions and value and edges and modeling of the form. All that is in black and white and monochromatic. So, and then color is just one thing. So it's important to separate that for a while, right? And like I said, I'm not really concerned about making it look good yet, right? It's just basically really paying attention to what's happening. And Mike says he found that trying to mix skin tones is a real pain, a big pain. It can be. Uh, and so one of the things that I feel in the French, French uh, the 19th century French academic painters, the Neoclassicists really felt that a strong drawing and good solid uh, grasp of values was first and then color is much easier after that. But trying to mix your color and value and everything and edges all at once, it's too much and too many people are drawing away their airbrush or selling it on some, some airbrush site for next to nothing. And, that's one of the things that I really want to stop. I want people to really enjoy their airbrush and grow with it, but grow from baby steps, not, you know, not trying to do things that are, you know, too much too soon. And that's sort of why, you know, when I paint, I also make sure that I go very light and don't go too dark too soon. There's plenty of time, you know, uh, so there's no rush to go straight in with color. Even when I work in color, it is, this is like the perfect underpainting. So, you know, doing this, you're learning color because if you have a solid underpainting underneath, color is gonna be so much easier, so much easier. Mike says, it doesn't help only trying to do it three times. I think once he learns some more and some tricks, it will get easier. It definitely gets easier as we see better, Mike, and definitely gets easier as you're doing monochromatic. Uh, if you do this, uh, your grasp of this subject matter will really help you. And it's really about seeing more than anything, learning how to see the values and the edges and stuff like that. You're going to be tempted to want to go forward to move fast. When that happens, you just slow it down. And continue that one second rule for, you know, that proportion. 
if you're painting for a second, uh, you make sure you look first for a second. So if you're painting for three seconds, you make sure you look for three seconds before. Gloria, thanks so much. It's great to talk to you. I hope you have a great night. These values here in the whites of her eyes are very, very close. So even though it's the white of her eyes, the value of the other parts of her eye, the eyelids are very close. So you see they sort of like sit back and it's happening on both sides. Not so much on the, the eye on the left, but the eye on the right, definitely that's the case. Subtlety is everything. It really is crucial. And also maintaining good distance is so important too. Now the airbrush that I'm using is this one right here, which is the Extreme Patriot Arrow. And you can purchase this at USA Airbrush, usaairbrushsupply.com. And if you use the code in the description field, Timothy PSA, you get $10 off and that saves you some money. What I like to do is take that sort of high roller trigger that you see there. And what I do is I go ahead and I change it with a regular size trigger, which is also available on the website and you'll get 10% off that as well. The good thing about all of the Badger airbrushes that all of the triggers are interchangeable. So you take off that high roller trigger and put a lower trigger and that seems to solve the problem. So it looks like I did uh, lose the chat. I'm just going to go ahead and reauthorize that. It'll just take two seconds. guys should be visible in three two one there you are great uh, so 1030 that's right I had to change it that's so true Willie Ray says after all the work he's been doing uh, he's finally finding brush control to be much easier and relaxed so much so that the last two paintings I he did not use the brush at all that's fantastic yep that's you know it's the Getting used to it, right? That's the main thing is uh, time is uh, become more one with your airbrush. But working in the monochromatic is really fantastic. And uh, Ray says the nice thing about the, uh, the, the Patriot Extreme, the 105, is that he can control the thickness of the line with the, with the little uh, micro air valve, which is really cool. Definitely. So we're still moving around, keeping that going. So remember the uh, code Timothy PSA. I get a small commission. You're just helping out the channel. No, actually, it gives you 10% off. So it actually is in your best interest. Now there was a 20% off coupon, but I believe that ended yesterday. So right now, my coupon is the best in the game right now at 10%. There was a Columbus Day coupon, I believe. I think that's that was the case. Mike says it's nice to see someone's Mac valve works. My his doesn't uh, 
his does nothing on his uh, on his particular airbrush. Oh man, definitely. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, let them know. I personally, I like my external Mac valve. I like it here. I seem to have a little more control for me because I'm, you know, an old dog and I like old tricks. I use, so I don't. Uh, I'd rather have it there. So I like the external Mac valves anyway. So I definitely recommend getting one of them, uh, Mike, if you can. That's really fantastic. Yes, Ray says that he thinks that the uh, 105, the, the Extreme Patriot, actually is better in control than his uh, Custom Micron. I concur with that. I find that the same. I really enjoy it. And... Um, you know, it's like anything else. I think the more time you spend with the uh, with the extreme patriots, you just really realize that you're going to get this unbelievable amount of control. Don't be too hasty to uh, go ahead and use a freehand shield until you have that that perfect uh, contour. Mike says the inline one is great and that's all he uses. Oh, okay, that's cool, yes. You know, it's it's definitely what you're used to is really important as well. I find that. That's why when I got my had purchased my Extreme Patriot Arrow, I immediately got rid of that high roller trigger. I did not want to get used to something. Uh, I'd rather hit the ground running. And I really hated that uh, trigger, that high roller trigger. Hated it. And just working on the uh, darks there. Uh, Ray says he also has the uh, Mac valve on the brush and uses it in conjunction uh, with the front screw and can actually lay in fine lines. Oh, really nice, like thin thread, very cool. Yeah, the airbrush is just amazing. And I love the way that the uh, needle comes out. Working on some of the larger shapes of the ear there. Nothing too crazy. Just the larger shapes. Hey Willie, thank you so much man. It's always good to see you. Uh, I hope you have a great week my friend. And of course, Willie, I'll leave this up so you can check this out during the week, this video in its entirety. Now, what we can do is we can start to model some of the lights here in her ear. very simple we don't really go too crazy with detail in the ear but we do want to look where it's a little bit darker and then it sort of fades lighter as we go down further like that I'll go a long way for the you know just getting the character of this portrait be surprised how something as simple as an ear could really help Mike says, so far the best airbrush he has is that Tamiya Spray Works. Very cool. Oh, 
Oh, and so the arrow is a close second. That's great, Mike. Yeah. That's good to hear. And let's go ahead and uh, just very quickly reiterate this contour here. You're going to make little adjustments with the drawing throughout the painting, and that's just fine. So once that is done, then we can go ahead and use our freehand shield and really uh, bring home uh, a little strong that particular value, that edge there. Try to always remember the perpendicular when you can. Now one of the things you always want to remember, see there are these little openings in the freehand shield. Uh, you could be going over here and you could be increasing your distance and then all of a sudden you have this shape here and you're done. So make sure you know about these little shapes in here. Uh, a lot of people will go ahead and tape that up. You know, that's, that's important because once you have that shape come out when you're using the freehand shield, you don't forget it. Ray says he has to call in a night. Oh man, it's great to talk to you, Ray. I'm so glad uh, you're doing some great work. I really enjoy it. And let's see if we can work on her chin here. And erasing some of those pencil lines as we go because we no longer need uh, those guiding lines. So that really helps. So now what we can do is pretty much dust over her hair. Nothing too crazy. We're just going to darken it. Just This is a pretty much of a dark shape over here. So we're going to look at the hair as a large shape, you know, as opposed to hair. And that's something that we could really, really concentrate on. I can use a freehand shield here and make sure that I don't get overspray. You can always soften it down the line. Whoop. That noise means that air is getting underneath the freehand shield. So you, what I do is I just tilt it. Oh, Ray says it wouldn't be happening if it hadn't been for the great lessons. Oh, thank you, Ray. I appreciate it. You're a great teacher and you have a lot of talent. And that is definitely, uh, you know, what you brought to the table. So it was a pleasure teaching you and, uh, you know, how quickly you picked up the principles and everything. So I think that's really cool. Uh, Mike S. says, uh, Tim is an 18 pack of softy, uh, Tim asks, 18 pack of soft erasers, two inch by two inch size for 19 bucks, a good deal. What kind of erasers are they? What brand? That will definitely help. Uh, there are a lot of really bad cheap erasers out there. So, uh, you know, definitely you want artist grade erasers and ones that won't dig into the surface or even other things. Uh, you know, that sort of thing is uh, really, really important, you know. Uh, so definitely let me know what brand it is or send me the link. I'll definitely let you know, Mike. That's for sure.
And as you can see, I'm really not rushing anything. I'm taking my time. Oh, you mean the uh, needed erasers like these over here? Yes, the brand name would really be important too. Uh, those needed erasers are very good. Uh, I do like Prismacolor, but my favorite has to be the one that I just picked up. I think they're favorite Castell. Those are the best because what happens is a lot of them really maintain a lot of oil and then it becomes real nasty real quick. So. Yeah, not all needed erasers are, you know, created equally. Over here let's see if we can just concentrate a little bit on the forms of her eye socket here and of course I'm doing that one second rule guys which is really crucial looking I'm painting for two seconds I'm looking for two seconds We want to look at I am out of ink so that's an easy fix here we just take our light mixture and that's probably the fastest uh, loading of any any ink you're ever going to have or paint is just really easy. Test it and I am ready to go. There's no mixing medium or anything like that. This is really fantastic. I can go from the light to the medium to dark that quickly. And of course it just, uh, you know, cleans up with soap and water which is really fantastic. Oh, okay. Well, then that favorite Castell and definitely jump on that. I think that's a pretty good deal. That's for sure. Okay, so I'm going to take my uh, mono eraser here. We're going to work on her eye. Make sure we get this shape correct. Definitely want to be paying attention to the forms, you know. Let's go ahead and blow that up. Let's see. I'm just doing these little tiny dagger strokes. Just getting this beautiful control here and I see that it comes out down a little bit like that and then not only that we want to shape the iris as well
and you see on this low pressure probably between 15 about 15 psi I would say I'm at and you can see I'm able to do this really beautiful tight detail so I'm at 25 psi and then I just use my Mac valve and lower it probably to around 15 and oh thank you Mike I appreciate that and then we're just sculpting right now sketching and sculpting and of course this is all the light mixture there's going to be variations and everything down the line but right now we're just basically sketching anything we do on this side I'm going to immediately work on the other eye you don't want to go too far ahead one eye to another and then you lose that continuity So you see now we'll just move on over to the other eye. And I'm going to erase some of these pencil lines in just a moment because they're just guidelines at, at first. Everything is super light right now because of the light mixture. But with the light mixture, guys, is this is what's going to give you that control, you know, and it's cali calibrated by me so it's not too dark. If this was just a little bit darker, you would not have control, you would get too dark too quick and you wouldn't be able to sketch and sculpt the forms like this. Little dagger strokes, that's basically what we're doing here. In the photo, there's very little contrast, so I'm sort of repeating that sort of little bit of contrast over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to blow some air on there real fast, dry that, because you don't want to do any erasing when it's still dry. Even though I'm using 184 pound paper by color line, uh, it's still, you want to really protect the surface. So let's go ahead and see if we could just lightly get rid of some of those pencil lines. As you see, as I'm erasing the pencil lines, things get much lighter because we're getting rid of those guidelines. And that also tells us that we need to go back in as well. See those like right here, this was a pencil line that was really giving us this sort of darker value inside the white of her eye. So once we remove that pencil, we gotta make sure we, we reiterate that with the airbrush. We have a little bit of a dark value here in the outer area of her iris here. Same thing on this side. The airbrush is really very beautiful uh, tool once you get the control of it. 
you can have just as much control as a pencil. It's something that, you know, we all strive for. But I'll tell you, using my ink mixtures makes your life a lot easier. So let's see what we have. So you see, now her eyes seem to be, you know, have a little more continuity to them. Uh, we can also bring in our eraser and get rid of some of those pencil lines we don't need. And then we can go ahead and come back. So basically, today's lesson is really about patience and why it's so important to take your time to model the forms. You know, like in lesson one, we spent a good part of the time fixing up the drawing aspects before we went in with the airbrush. Same here, we're actually really working on the shapes and the development of the forms before we start to go in with the uh, medium mixture. Okay, I'm going to very quickly show you guys the frisket film that we're going to use. I'll be right back. So I don't think we're going to be using the frisket today as much as the, uh, this is a different kind of frisket that you can uh, use here. So, so right here you see we have, uh, this is your stereotypical frisket, uh, frisket all purpose. It's very expensive. This is low tack. It probably is going to charge you. It's probably going to be around $25 for this. But um, this stuff is contact brand and it's clear contact paper. It's self adhesive. And this stuff works really good because I find that it's, it's actually uh, thicker and it's a lot easier to, to cut it without cutting into the actual surface. And I really love it on paper because it doesn't grab onto the paper or tear it when you uh, pull it out. So definitely, definitely, this is really good. So, and Ray was actually the person who taught me, he was actually using uh, this uh, contact and frisket on the paper here. And that's what we're gonna do probably in the next one. We're gonna show you how to use this contact paper to map off the face so we can work on the background. So I think that would be really cool. So let's go to 
back to the artwork. So I think that, I hope that was, that's going to be really interesting. Uh, Mike says he sent on the links on the uh, erasers. Very cool. I appreciate that. So, so this is where we are. As you see, we're not really going to work over here because we're going to actually use Frisket to mask off the background so I can do the dark part of her hair on here and maintain that really nice contour then after that is done we're going to cover her up and actually work on the background so we're going to do that it's going to be very important because i think those subtle edges are going to look really great using the frisket film And like I said, we're moving around. Same thing over here. I'm going to neglect to do this because this part of her dress, because we're going to use frisket film for that. And I think it's best to have patience and wait for that. And that will be next week. So right now while we're here, we're just going to go ahead for the last, I would say, 20 minutes. We're just going to continue to model the form you know not worry about the likeness at all so the background is very similar to what you see in the reference uh, to the right I'm gonna have that sort of uh, you know really dark gray behind her but not as dark as what's going to be over here which is the side plane of her of her face and and hair so it's really gonna look really good and give that sort of that you know vintage vintage portrait feel and that's what I really really wanted to do once I saw this photo I sort of had to uh, had to paint it uh, you know a lot of the airbrush artists they do very modern photographs but I thought it would be a nice change of pace to do a photograph that looks very 19th century, you know. It's a little bit darker uh, on her neck than her chin, so let's go ahead and establish that. I tilt it just a little bit if you find that the uh, air is getting underneath the um, freehand shield. The thing is, you don't want to go too dark because that's reserved for the darker values, the darker mixtures. So we're just establishing a very sort of light, uh, light version of the painting. We come with the medium, we darken things up to the dark mixture, and then the dark accents and the white pastel. So that's pretty cool. Uh, oh, Mike said he thought I was changing it differently. Oh, yeah, sometimes I do, right? But this one I want to stay true to the reference. And also when you're doing, you can see like when a certain value is out of line. Uh, even though this is going to be dark, everything's going to be much darker. Right here, it looks like the value is real out of line. So I'm just going to erase that lighten that up so it's just in line with everything even though everything's going to get darker you don't want anything being too dark any area that throws off the relationships Now we do see down here, we do have the turning of her shoulder. So let's see if we can go ahead and start that a little bit. Using a freehand shield, remember just like the wing of the nostril, we describe the form sometimes by what's adjacent to it. See that? And 
we want to turn that shoulder because that's really what's going to uh, make this portrait really effective is that you can actually feel her. As you can see, I'm moving around. But you see, if I was, if I didn't know my dilutions and I stuck with, you know, just winging it, I wouldn't have this system and it just, you know, one can get lost. And this sort of keeps the artist from getting lost. Now right here where uh, sort of her chin comes away from her ear there, we sort of lost that contour. So let's go ahead and take this opportunity to fix it. Uh, Mike says he can't see it. He says my ink set text is scrolling through the screen. Sorry about that, my friend. Uh, but right here is... So we're going to be working on this part right over here, uh, Mike. So what I did was, you can see I had that angle incorrect. So I'm always looking to uh, to correct anything that's out of line. And you can see that angle is much more elegant than what I had. And then you can see how that sort of helps everything just fall into place better. And it's okay to come back in with the pencil and then go a, you know, airbrush and then then erase it as well, you know. Oh yeah, but unfortunately I still have to yeah, I might move it over to the side. Still gotta pay the I still gotta pay the light bill there, uh, Mike, unfortunately. So I gotta keep the advertising part going, you know. So maybe next time it might be best to just like move it up or over. That's a good idea, right, Mike? So that's pretty cool. All so right now you see that I was able to go ahead and adjust that and then it really does a lot to uh, really does a lot to express the elegance of her of her neck oh very cool Mike that sounds good yeah moving it around is probably the best thing there we go And also, you know, we got to model her neck, right? So we want to model her neck as it turns uh, away from the light towards her chin. So I'm a good distance, as you see. Oh, cool. The Im Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I could see that too, Mike. Definitely. Perfect. Okay, and let's go ahead and now right here, her nose, it's just ever so dark right here. And because it's turning away from the form, just a, turning away from the light, not directly, but just a slight bit. So just going ahead and just give that very subtle uh, shift in value. See, I'm a really good distance away, you know, which is really important. So you see, as I want to get something so subtle, I make sure I'm not normally at this distance, I'm a little bit further and I can get much more subtle. That's a great thing with airbrush. I think in other mediums, people will have a much harder time doing that. So we have that advantage, you know. And then over here with her eye, we see that 
uh, it gets much more light, sort of fades as it goes to the corner of her eye. See that? And right here. And then we can go ahead and erase some of those pencil lines. Remember, using the uh, Create Text 5050 Illustration White in the very beginning, and the light mixture enables us to go ahead and erase those those lines. Let's see if I can really, really uh, establish this contour here. That's the main thing I really want to do when I teach airbrushes, to really teach the use because it's really how to see and how to use the tools. That those are the two things that are the, the biggest takeaways I feel. See right there, it's a little too wet. You gotta be careful. So it's always good to wipe off that freehand shield, you know? And so Mike says that fine gradient from dark to light is hard sometimes, but really make the roll of the nose or whatever look more realistic. Definitely, you want to get that subtlety. And we have the airbrush to really get subtlety better than any, any medium out there. That's the great thing about the airbrush, Mike, right? Is that we can get the softest edges than any other medium. Oil painters wish they can do what we can do. And watercolor painters, they just, you know, they're not even in the same ballpark as far as, you know, the ability of soft edges as we can get. Just darkening up to her lips there. And let's give some form to her lower lip. That would be a good thing. Let's do that. Very soft edge over here. We're not worrying about detail just yet. We're just worrying about the larger shapes, the forms, making it turn from there. Uh, try with crayons. <laughs> yeah, crayons are a little difficult, right, Mike? Uh, crayons, you know, we all start with crayons. But yeah, that's a horrible art supply, right? I remember, Mike. When I got older and I had stepchildren and I tried to do something with the crayons and it's just horrible, horrible. Just, just finding out where things are, you know, and once we come in with the darks and everything, things will look much more like the model, but right now we're just looking at the larger forms. And like I said, we're just we're just going to model her lips here, this lip here, lower lip. There we go. So now that we do that, we can definitely take our eraser and just blow some air on there. Make sure it's nice and dry because we're going to do some erasing.
So you see we're modeling that lower lip. Now I'm not looking for any detail, I'm just looking to create that three-dimensional form, that form in space, right? Just as the nose is being affected by the light, the lower lip is being affected by the light. At one point, he, uh, Mike says he hated art class with the weird kids eating Elmer's glue and crayons. <laughs> yeah, that was, I remember I paid a kid in junior high school to drink the watercolor water. He did, but he spit it out, so I got my quarterback. That was pretty gross, though. Remember, the whole table would be doing watercolor in our class, and we had that one big tub of water that we used, and it was usually like this disgusting muddy color. It was pretty funny, though. I cracked up. Of course, a kid, you know, how toxic was that? But as kids, you don't think about that stuff. You're just trying to pay someone to <laughs> drink something weird. That's weird stuff we do as kids. But it was his idea. He's like, I'll drink it for $25, 25 cents. So all the kids at the table was like, yeah, we'll give you 25 cents. And... He swished it in his mouth and he spit it out. I think he chickened out. Thank God, because he could have gotten sick, you know. Hey, Bill, how's it going? How's everything, my friend? Good to see you. So as you can see, everything's very subtle, very soft, and sort of, uh, you know, handling airbrush in a very classical sense. Uh, you know, as one would do a drawing in the 19th century French academic sense. Oh, thanks, Bill. I appreciate that, my friend. So as you can see, we are just... Uh, Bill says he was painting something to realize the day and the time. Oh, I'm glad you made it. Better late than never, my friend. So I'm so glad you're here. So as you can see, I'm really refining the forms. So go ahead and download Pure Ref. It's really a great program. Uh, it enables you to do some really amazing things. Uh, let me see if I could show you. I'm going to do this real fast. This will be the last thing I do tonight. So I'm just going to go to Screen Capture. And I'm going to... Let's see. Okay, let's do monitor capture real quick. Now, this is the first time I'm doing this. So, okay, so you see we have... Oh, look at that. That's sort of a weird thing. Sort of an infinity thing happening here. So, let's get out of here and kill that. So, this is what we'll do. We'll go to a different uh, scene that we're not using. So we'll do this scene and then we'll go ahead and do the monitor capture. Okay. So now you guys see my monitor, right? Nope, that's not working. That's that's crazy. So we will get out of there and go back. One of these days I'll show you how to do that whole thing with sort of uh, ill prepared to do that. So. Anyway, I'm going to do a video, I think, on Pure Ref. I think it's going to be really very good. And uh, that's something I think will be uh, fantastic. Because the Pure Ref that I'm using really helps me to have my reference in front of me. I can enlarge it for detail. And I don't have to worry about using a separate program. It's a separate program, but it's on top of the... Uh, it's on top of everything else, so I can always move it around. Mike says, Bill really likes the color videos. Very cool. Yeah, they were great. So that's fantastic. So basically, you know, as you see, we are modeling the forms. Everything is very light and subtle because we are setting up for the, for the medium mixture. But next week we are going to do the clear contact paper. 
and we're going to set up some masks and we're going to establish the background and really bring everything home sort of anchor everything together which is going to be really fantastic yeah pure ref is really fantastic just remember when you download it you have the option to change five dollars to give a zero donation and they'll still let you download it so really fantastic so guys i'm going to go ahead and end this tonight i hope you guys have a great week thank you so much for hanging out bill and mike gloria uh rick everyone who came by tone uh my guess of course and you know uh thank you so much willie everybody uh, i hope you guys have a great week take care of yourselves i always have a lot of fun with you guys